independent video games, also known as indie games, are not as easy to define as you might expect. The most clear definition we get is independently self-published games, usually consisting of a small team or a single person, often having a very small budget compared to AAA titles. The problem with this definition is that it's kind of missing the whole point of why indie games are so special, and it really comes down to the artistry and self-contained vision that goes into these games. When you play a game like Hollow Knights, every detail or puzzle or battle feels like it's covered in the fingerprints of its developers. Not only are you exploring the handcrafted experience that was created for you, but it's also the relationship between the player and the developer that really starts to come through in these games. You're not just playing a video game, you're stepping into the world of deep passion and many years of hard work that these developers went through to create something that started as only just an idea. Now, I'm not saying that AAA games don't have passion behind them, because of course that wouldn't be true. Some of the greatest stories ever told in any medium come from these massive teams that pour their heart and soul into their games, but with indie developers, it becomes a lot more personal. You might be surprised to hear that indie games have only really gained popularity in the past 10 to 15 years. Before that, indie devs weren't taken so seriously. The first real spark of the indie game age actually started in 2005, when Valve, the company that created monster hits like the Half-Life series, signed an agreement to open their own publishing website to the public, allowing independent developers to publish their own games. This website, now well known as Steam, became the hub for any up-and-coming developer to try and find success in a still fresh and developing market. If you didn't know about this big indie gaming boom, this was so out of left field for game developers. The fact that you can now publish your own games with zero experience in the industry and zero budget, while also potentially making money from it, was baffling. So many developers spent their entire lives trying to get jobs in their favorite game companies, only to find out that now you can just do all that by yourself. Other developers who already had established jobs in the industry were quitting, because now there was this weird potential to have full creative control over what you create, which wasn't there before. So much of what makes indie games special is the fact that there's an actual chance to take risks. When you don't have a huge company and budget behind you, it opens a lot of doors for trying something new, even though it might not end up working. Take a look at Activision. Every year we get a new Call of Duty game. Sure, these games can end up being great, but because there's such a big expectation on the company from the fans, there isn't a ton of room to take risks. These games also make so much money that it's kind of a no-brainer to put the biggest budgets towards them, instead of trying something new. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but it kind of highlights what is so special about indie games. When a small group of people with nothing to lose dedicate themselves to a project, they really have a chance to gamble on their own passions and ideas. That's why we see games like Binding of Isaac or Goat Simulator, ideas that are so weird that it would be impossible to pitch to a big company and have them actually take you seriously. Taking a risk comes in a lot of forms, whether it's testing out a new mechanic that's never been seen before, or creating an entirely new genre in itself. One of the reasons I personally got into game development was actually playing through a bunch of RPG Maker games, like To The Moon and Omori. If you haven't heard of RPG Maker, it's basically an extremely beginner-friendly engine that allows you to make simple role-playing games. Or at least that's what it started as, until the projects being created got bigger and much more impressive. Now games made on this engine have kind of become a genre of their own, and before the surge of indie game popularity, I don't think something like this would have been possible. I truly believe that the majority of popular indie games wouldn't be what they are today if they had the pressure of a AAA company behind them. I think a great example for this point is No Man's Sky, which you may not know is actually an indie game. When people found out about this space adventure with an endless amount of planets to explore and creatures to find, it was easily one of the most anticipated titles at the time, making it seem like it was AAA. You might be even more shocked to find out that by the time of its release, No Man's Sky was only developed by a team of four people. While the reception when it came out was mediocre to say the least, it was an insane feat for such a small team to accomplish, and if it wasn't for the ridiculous expectations on their shoulders, No Man's Sky could have gone down as one of the greatest indies of all time. 
On the other hand, when taking a risk, there's always a chance it doesn't work out, and that's the case for the vast majority of indie games. At some point, doing everything by yourself or with a small team has its limits, and because of that, you have to accept the fact that your game might be a flop. There has to be thousands of developers that spent years and years on their dream project, only to see little to no success. It's the biggest risk you can take, pouring your life into something without knowing the outcome. And that's something I think we can all connect with in some way. Undertale has been talked to death at this point. It's won countless awards for its charming and witty writing, its innovative combat system, unique art style, and unbelievably catchy music. While all of these factors do make it a truly memorable experience, Undertale's biggest strength is actually something totally different. When Toby Fox was creating Undertale, his vision for the game was purely his own. That means every piece of art, every line of code, every note of every song has his fingerprints. It isn't just the innovation of Undertale that made it special, it's the journey you go on with the developer. Maybe it's just that I feel like I understand a piece of the experience as a dev myself, but there's really no denying that you're playing out a part of Toby Fox's mind, a point in time in his life through his lens. Maybe it's why people like going to museums and staring at art so much. You're looking directly into the soul of someone's own experience, in its rawest form and emotion. Indie games aren't just small games, they're a personal experience you can connect with, a work of art to admire, and when done right, a story that was meant to be shared with others. So go out there and follow your dreams, because I truly believe that those individual experiences are worth sharing. I've been Apox Fox, thanks for watching, uh, bye bye.